So everyone, uh, good evening from Galilee, from Israel. This is Amir Tsarfati. Today, it, um, I, it's um, April, excuse me, today is March 31st. It's Saturday, March 31st. Tomorrow, I'll be live. Uh, it's a Resurrection Sunday. Some of you call it Easter. Um, but um, again, tomorrow, um, I just want you to know that uh, tomorrow, it's going to be a live update, uh, excuse me, a live teaching, and uh, it's not April's full day. I mean, it's, it's a real thing that we're going to do tomorrow. Um, so here we are. Um, I'm going to talk for a few minutes about, um, about what's going on in Gaza right now and uh, the, international, the international reaction to the events in Gaza. Then we're going to talk about what's going on in Syria, and we're also going to talk about uh, a couple other things. Uh, but first of all, I want to tell you, a lot of people wrote me, knowing that I'm about to leave next week to Turkey and Greece to, to start filming our new project, Bible Lands Unveiled. Um, quite a few people wrote me, and they said that they're very concerned about me traveling to Turkey nowadays. Um, in fact, some people had some dreams and visions, um, and they wanted to share with me, basically warning me not to go. Um, I'm not afraid, and, and I'm not normally canceling things uh, this this way, just because somebody said it's dangerous. However, when we uh, received an email from our counterparts in Turkey, the Turkish producers told us that it's better not to come or if I am to go to Turkey I need to basically delete all of my YouTube content because of my criticism on Erdogan or I don't think I criticize anything I think I just report things that are happening um, in fact Turkey is in a very very bad spot right now and probably it it's in its worst uh, shape right now uh, as far as the fear and the, the the terror that is in the streets and it's not what it used to be and um, we decided to uh, once we got that email when we realized that uh, my safety and my freedom is not secured over there we decided to change our plans and uh, I'll be flying in fact uh, to Rome and we'll be I'll be teaching twice in Rome, uh, Bible studies. One will be uh, next to the Colosseum, and the other one will be next to the Vatican. And God gave me two messages. Uh, f f it's interesting. One is related to the book of Romans, uh, and, and both of them are actually related to the book of Romans. But one is completely about Israel, about to the Jews first. Um, the, the title will be, When in Rome to the Jews first. And it's very interesting. I asked the Lord, why is it that you take me all the way to Rome to, to teach a message on the Jewish people first? And um, the Lord told me, basically, everywhere Paul went, and even while being in Rome, he made sure that he fulfills his duty to go to the Jewish people first. And he shared with them. And even while being completely in, in in his chains, probably days or weeks before his death, um, Paul summoned all the Jewish people to his apartment in Rome, of all places. And, and Paul gave them a very interesting, uh, I'm not sure if it's called speech, but it says in, in Acts chapter... 28, it says, And it came to pass that after these days that Paul called the leaders of the Jews together. And that's when he came back to Rome. Oh, so when they had come together, he said to them, Men and brethren, though I have done nothing against our people or the customs of our fathers, yet I was delivered as a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who when they had examined me, wanted to let me go, because they found there was no cause for putting me to death. But when the Jews spoke against it, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar. Not that I have anything of which to accuse my nation, 
For this reason, therefore, I have called for you to see you and speak with you, because for the hope of Israel, I am bound with this chain. Wow. Can you imagine Paul, an ultra-Orthodox Jew, is in Rome, and he's summoning the Jewish people, and he's telling them, I have nothing against you. I, I totally understand the blindness of our nation. I also understand that it's a blindness that God gave them because of their hardening of their hearts. But I want to tell you something. This, this chain on me, it is because of the hope of Israel. He is the hope of Israel. And it's always, always going to be to the Jew first that I will give my message. And so we're going to examine that even while in um in Rome and then the other one um the other message will in Rome will be it's not about religion brother and the Vatican will be right behind me so I'm going to teach in Rome in Athens in Corinth and in Thessaloniki and I'm I'm really looking forward to it because this is uh to me I know that there's millions of Christians around the world that will never be able to come to Israel nor to any of those Bible lands and my heart is to bring Israel to them and to bring Bible lands to them and to, to make them understand the Word of God in the context of the places and the events and, of course, the, the history, geography, topography, and everything. And so um, I can't wait to film those teachings and I can't wait to release those DVDs and those teachings online. So pray for us. Next Friday, we're leaving to Rome and pray for us that the Lord will bless those things. Um, and uh, I'm confident that he who began the good work will be faithful to complete it. So and, and so I'm, I'm not going to Turkey. And we're going to start with just a few minutes ago. President Erdogan said that the Jewish people or Israel, he said, uh, committed um, what he says, um, war crimes against um against the Palestinian people. And uh, let me just explain what happened. The Palestinians have failed on almost every, every parameter. It's, it's the international community that is not on their side. It's UN condemnation that is no longer automatically there because of the new US administration. The, the Sunni Arab world is not on their side anymore. Um, you're talking about even the reconciliation between Hamas and Fatah is no longer there. The Israeli public don't, you know, we don't believe them anymore that they really want peace. I mean, it's a colossal failure. And what happened is that they decided that um, they will get the attention of the whole world and of themselves if they just bring thousands and thousands of people to mass around the border between Israel and Gaza. Now, bear in mind, Israel pulled out of Gaza in 2004. And you need to understand that we did that unilaterally, but we moved back to the international border, which means Gaza is no longer an occupied territory. Now, since Gaza is a launching pad for so many rockets, and since Gaza was taken over by a terrorist organization called Hamas, Israel completely locked Gaza from our side. We say, you know, you want to have connections with Egypt, that's fine, but we're not going to allow you to freely go in and out of Israel and bring all those bombs and explosives. Um, it's out of the question. Uh, we're definitely going to let food and medicine on anything you need into the Gaza Strip. We will definitely do that. But we're not going to uh, to to open the Gaza Strip to Israel as if nothing is happening when, when the terrorist organization is taking over. Now, you need to understand also that um, most Gazans understand Hamas is the worst nightmare that they ever had. And in fact, for the last 10 years, Hamas is ruling Gaza and it, it brought Gaza to the worst situation they've ever been. Um, now, now, bear in mind that um, they promised a march of million people and barely 20,000 showed up. Now, we, Israeli intelligence, knew exactly that they're going to use this mass gathering of thousands of people to infiltrate um, through the fence into Israel and to, to let terrorists, under the guise of, of some popular 
demon peaceful demonstration we knew that they're planning on on sending terrorists and so they did and so they did in fact israel if israel killed anyone we killed armed people we killed terrorists we killed uh, several people that try to put bombs plant bombs and we 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 kill people who are who try to infiltrate with guns on them so peaceful it wasn't um civilian it wasn't in 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 it was everything we expected it to be and more and trust me the casualties 16 was nothing compared to what it could have been and i want to tell you something 16 people and i'm talking about innocent people in 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 syria women and children that die almost every hour they don't nobody cares about them nobody convene the security council of the united nations nobody does a thing but 16 palestinians of which most of them are armed and try to infiltrate into israel that is a war crime that is we need in, to investigate that the security council convenes the the un secretary general says well let's have a, let's have a, an independent uh, investigation of how they died it's very simple. They died because they tried to cross the border with weapons on them. You don't have to be rocket scientist to find it. We we can provide you all the evidences. We have all the videos. We have all the footage. We we found those guns on them and those hand grenades on them. Are you kidding me? The world finds time in the Security Council to condemn Israel that is trying to protect its borders, but says nothing about the ongoing slaughter in Syria, which is again the hypocrisy of the UN and I'll tell you something they tried yesterday something they're gonna try April 17th again but their target is by May 14 when when Israel has the um, the 70th anniversary according to the uh, the uh, the uh, solar calendar and that's the day uh, Trump is, is planning on moving the embassy to Jerusalem. That's the day they're planning to have their massive um, protest along the border. Israel is ready. They thought that we're not going to do anything. They thought we're going to just watch them infiltrate into our territory and do nothing. Well, they they were wrong again. I think that they were, again, they were wrong in every parameter. But it's interesting how um, you, you, you can clearly see how uh, the Turkish president is using every opportunity to infiltrate, to somehow incite and, 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 and bring more fire towards us. It's very sad because nowadays everybody knows the truth. Nowadays when you have live broadcasts from places, when you have, when you have cameras everywhere, when every civilian can have a, a Facebook live and it can become you know, a reporter wherever he is, it's very, very simple. Um, most of who we killed over the past 24 hours were Hamas operatives and they were armed. And that's it. If you're planning on entering into Israel uh, with a gun, uh, uh, we will not open the door for you. We will tell you, stay away. And if you will try to do it by force, we're going to have to kill you. And I'm telling that to all the nations around the world. If, if you're not going to let terrorists know that they're going to be killed if they're entering your territory, then they're going to come. They're going to infiltrate into your countries and they're going to do whatever they want. Europe is, is, uh, has allowed terrorists into its territory and Europe is paying the price. It, you know, France is paying the price and Belgium is paying the price and Germany is paying the price. Every, you know, there's so many incidents that you don't hear about. But the good thing is, and uh, I know some of you saw that there was a, a report in a Kuwaiti newspaper. Now, Kuwait, let me make it very clear, is a very anti-Semitic country, very, very anti-Israel country. And uh, don't believe, in fact, it is the Kuwait that convened um, the uh, meeting of the Security Council right now to speak about what's going on in Gaza. So, but it, it is a Kuwaiti newspaper that reported a couple of days ago that Israeli F-35s were flying into the airspace of Iran. And I'm wondering um, who is it that leaked that information? You certainly never heard that from me, although I know and I can tell you up front from close talks that I have with Israeli commanders and squadron commanders, squadron commanders of Israeli Air Force, 
Ever since President Trump was elected, Israel is enjoying the freedom that we never had in the past eight years of doing what it needs to do in order to ensure its security. And I'm talking about things that I wish, I wish I could tell you, I wish I could tell you about. I will be a responsible Israeli and I will not say those things live on, on the internet when I know that it's going to endanger our, our soldiers and endanger our people. But I will only tell you this, that the leaked information of the Kuwaiti newspaper is most likely coming from some mole in, in Arab um, intelligence community. Um, and that's what worries me the most. Israel doesn't mind that the Iranian will know that we are interested in destroying their nuclear uh, nuclear deal. We said that. In fact, Israel itself initiated the the, the reports on on of our responsibility for destroying in 2007 the North Korean nuclear reactor that was built in this in the Syrian desert. We did that, and we just admitted that. And we, while we admitted that, we said that we're not going to allow any of our enemies around us to have nuclear capacity and nuclear capability. That's it. So I'm not surprised that Israel says nothing. We don't even deny the fact that F-35s are flying into Iranian airspace. We, I want to tell you something about the F-35s. We bought them from America. We've got already uh, quite a few of them, maybe six or seven of them. But we put in them systems that are made in Israel, made by Israel. In their systems that allow the stealth fi a jet fighter to even be more creative and more invisible, and uh, the Russian raiders and the Iranian raiders. In in fact, most of the region, uh, they never heard about those flights. Allow me to suspect that the only ones that were aware of our flights there were the Americans, and now allow me to. <laughs> not to suspect, but to tell you up front that uh, ever since Trump is in the White House, America is allowing Israel to do what Israel needs to do in order to gather information about the Iranian nuclear plan. Um, for the eight years of Obama's administration, we were warned by Obama, don't even think about flying towards Iran, certainly not to attack there. And um, I want to tell you that in the last year, Israel had more operations in the depth of our enemy's territory. More than in one year, we had more operations than all eight years combined. And, and we do that because we finally have someone who understands how and why and who should fight terrorists. And um, this is the one thing I admire about President Trump is that you don't have to be a rocket scientist. You just have to understand there's the good guys and there's the bad guys. The good guys will always tell you the truth. The bad guys will always lie to your face. And, and the good guys will be on your side all the time. And the bad guys will only be with you when they need you. And they'll turn their back to you when you're no longer helping them somehow. And um, he, he could see that immediately. And uh, he doesn't believe the Iranians. He knows that the Iranians are very sneaky. They're snakes. And I'm talking about the Iranian administration, the people. The Iranian people are wonderful people, just so you know. Uh, we love them, and we, we hope that one day they will be released from that regime of tyrants over there. But I want to tell you that President Trump is, is uh, in actions and in words, is, is signaling to the world that in mid-May he's probably going to pull out of the Iranian nuclear deal. And that's why the Europeans are very concerned right now. In fact, the Europeans are standing firm with Trump when it comes to what's going on in Syria right now. And uh, just like Kim Jong-un, uh, the Europeans understand that in the White House, there is someone who is not playing games. And there is someone who is, they can call him crazy, but he, he is crazy. He's crazy because it's unknown in the realm of diplomacy to see someone who says one thing and means it. And, and he says it and he does it and it, they don't understand. How come 
you're saying everything? How come you're going straight forward? I mean, it, it's very strange for them. I've seen Trump's uh, greeting for Passover and Easter a couple days ago, and I was deeply moved because I saw a president that I understand one thing. He understands the aspiration of the Jewish people to live in freedom in their promised land. He called that their promised land. And he also acknowledged the faith in not only Jesus Christ as the Son of God, but also in the resurrection of Jesus. Um, I wish I could meet the guy and tell him how much there are so many Israelis that appreciate him, that love him. And I, I, I can tell you another thing. I can tell you that um, it's very easy to, to always think about his shortcomings and more so about his, his vices and, and bad past. I want to tell you something. We are all sinners saved by grace. And I can tell you one thing. From what I know, and I know that some of you may not agree with me, but I know some of the advisory members of President Trump when it comes to spiritual matters. And they told me that towards the end of the election campaign, about a month before the elections, when all the bad, terrible, you know, locker room conversation was leaked to the media, that was the time President Trump understood his sinful nature and, and realized how much he needs Jesus. And uh, it's interesting Ever since, you see he's very, very consistent in his support in Christianity and Christians and in Judeo-Christian principles. It's very, very interesting also that um, most of what they come up with is old stuff. The guy was a sinner. In fact, show me one politician in Washington, D.C. Uh, that um, is clean. But I will also tell you that this is a trick of the enemy. Satan will always, once you're saved, once you're forgiven, then Satan will always remind you of how bad your sins were and how bad you were and how unforgiven you are and all of those things. And I want to tell you something. I, I look at President Trump and I'm saying to myself, this, if this man is saved... God is using him in an amazing way right now. And um, I'm, I'm speechless when I see those things. Um, <clears throat> he's so bold in the way he speaks, not only to the, to the people of the world, but also to the media. And he puts the Midianites right where they need to be. And he tells them the truth to their faces. And they don't like him. And they, media, if the media loves you, you're in trouble. You're in deep trouble. The Midianites will always, always take the side of, of the one who owns them and the one who sponsors them. They're not, they're not uh, straightforward and, and they're not you know, having their own independent uh, thinking. They are the, the horn of, of the one who owns them. And remember that. Um, now, I know President Trump just said that... Uh, we will not stay long in Syria. He just said a couple of days ago. And then came the Saudi prince, crown prince today. And he said, if America is going to leave Syria, Iran will take over. And I'll tell you something. Um, President Trump, in, I don't know if you understand that. But what he did uh, in the Middle East is beyond phenomenal. He understood one thing. He understood that the one thing that the Syrians, the Russians are looking for is financing their, their struggle over there. He understood that the biggest oil fields are the prize that they want to have. He understood that in order to stop Assad, you need to stop his funding. And so President Trump actively right now, I don't know if you understand that, but America is involved right now actively in building um, in building military presence over there in uh, in Syria and I'm talking about massive massive uh, military presence over there right now we're, we're talking about 20 different military bases where thousands 
of American soldiers are already there alongside with the Kurds. You're talking about rocket, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, some some bases that are um, shielded from rockets all around those oil and gas fields in the Syrian area east of the Euphrates. Also, a, a military installation is being built next to the Omar oil field and um, the Americans brought their tanks and armored vehicles and and uh, drawbridges to cross the water and so many, many things. You understand that those oil fields manufacture 15,000 barrels a day and neither the Shiites nor ISIS or Bashar al-Assad or the Russians are having their hand on them. It is uh, the American uh, protected uh, forces that are there right now. You're talking about oil fields um, um, that in their in the height of their capacity in 2002 managed to supply 677,000 barrels a day. But then, of course, came it came down to 380, and and of course today we're talking about 15,000. Can you imagine the the potential? Of those things but not only that Trump made it clear that the best way to to stop all the money from flowing into Syria is also to close the um, the um, passage into Syria from Jordan and from from Turkey and from Iraq and I want to tell you something he's very successful in doing that and I know that not all of us are admirers of the Turks right now but right now what the Turks are doing in the north um, in blocking the passage into Syria uh, for for the Syrian regime. And right now what the Jordanians are doing from the south and what the Iraq is doing from the east, the whole dream of Iran to build a bridge from Iran to Mediterranean is gone. And add to that the soon withdrawal from the, uh, from the uh, nuclear agreement and you're looking at a great disaster for Iran. Russia is now expelling diplomats from its territory in response to the expel, expulsion of, of, the, of diplomats from all over Europe. The Russians are more isolated than ever. And I tell you, the Iranians are becoming also more isolated than ever. Turkey is also um, it's 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 gap the gap between the Turks and the the rest of NATO and the rest of Europe is growing wider and wider. And ladies and gentlemen, although the Turks don't really align with the Russians and the Iranians when it comes to Syria, when it comes to Israel, the Turks will do whatever it takes to bring about an end to Israel's uh, existence. And even though, even if it comes to um, collaboration with um, Russia and Iran, and um, I, I think this is this is phenomenal. So we're looking into a possibility of um, some Israeli action in Iran. We're looking into a possibility of uh, American action in Syria, and we're looking into a possibility of Russia. Um, of course, not agreeing to all of that happening all around it. And I'm just wondering, what's going to come first? A Russian-American confrontation or a Russian-Israeli confrontation? This is going to be interesting. The one thing I know, biblically, when the Russian-Israeli confrontation will come, America won't be able to help Israel. That is a for sure one, because the Bible doesn't say so. So... I'm, I'm going to let you decide. Where the Bible is silent, I better be silent. Um, so this is it. I just wanted to report about you know the Israeli planes above Iran, about what's going on in Gaza, about what's going on in Syria, and um, and um, and what's going on with Russia right now. I think uh, there's a lot of things that are happening. Um, um, I also want to warn you, um, there's too many news 
websites online and some of them look very um, friendly to the Christians um, most of them are sensationalists most of them are having hor horrible sources and most of them will deceive you most of them will deceive you and I'm talking about regarding the Middle East I'm not sure what's going on in in your own countries that's of course up to you but when it comes to the Middle East there's a lot of disinformation and I, I, I would like you always to examine things with an open Bible rather than with an open television set uh, it is a very very important thing that we we don't jump into conclusions and that we and, and for the most part every time they report on something sensational and then it never happens you will never hear any apology from them and, and, and they're gonna report some some very imaginary stuff that is happening and then they will never say sorry we were wrong so um, I would be very very careful these could be on almost falling under that definition of of uh, false prophets so be very very careful when it comes to these things good so um, thank you everyone for watching uh, again tomorrow around this time tomorrow probably about 20 minutes later than now tomorrow I'm going to be giving a live teaching on the resurrection of Jesus a teaching that is called first fruits resurrection it's a teaching that uh, uh, I really want to uh, give here online especially to people who've been to church or those who cannot go to church but those who've been to church early morning sunrise service will probably have an extra service if they want when they watch but those who don't go to church who may not have a church that could be your um, Easter service um, I'm going to try and have a quiet uh, house here and uh, we're going to talk about Old Testament promises we're going to talk about New Testament fulfillment we're going to talk about the meaning of the resurrection of Jesus we're also going to clear the fog or at least try to understand how come there's so many theories about the crucifixion day I'm gonna try and give you at least the two major schools of teachings when it comes to the crucifixion time and, and we're gonna try and understand why is it that there's so much uh, confusion about that and uh, we're also going to talk about what is it that the, the sign of Jonah meant versus what is it that um, um, Hosea the prophet meant so we, we're gonna look into those things tomorrow evening we're gonna talk about the meaning of the resurrection we're gonna talk about uh, many things tomorrow uh, hopefully you will be there uh, and uh, tomorrow you'll be blessed by the message thank you very much again I'm not going to Turkey for those of you who are very concerned we switched Turkey with Rome and uh, I'm gonna fly next Friday to Rome and then to Athens, Corinth, and Thessaloniki, and I'm going to sh I'm going to be filming my new project, my new teaching project called Bible Lands Unveiled. And uh, the Lord gave me several messages to to speak in Rome. I will speak from the Book of uh, Romans. In Athens, we'll talk about uh, the Book of Acts, and in both Corinth and Thessaloniki, I'll be teaching. Uh, from the letters that Paul wrote to, to those two churches. Thank you very, very much, and God bless you, and Shalom. And uh, I am excited about tomorrow because we're celebrating the Resurrection Sunday, and even in Israel, it falls this year on Sunday. Thank you, and God bless you, and Shalom from Galilee. Bye-bye.